This is the second video in the vector and steering behavior series, and in this tutorial we'll be adding a few more functions to our vector class, going through our ship's code in greater detail, and improving that code with the new functions. We're going to add four functions. Each of these functions will deal with the length or magnitude of a vector. The functions are get magnitude, normalize, set magnitude, and limit magnitude. And we're going to start with get magnitude. The get magnitude function tells you, unsurprisingly, how long the vector is, what its magnitude is, or its length is. So this vector will say has a length of two, this vector has a length of 0 0.5, this vector has a length of three, and so on. In code, the get magnitude function looks like this. But to be honest, and I've gone back and forth on this, I'm not going to explain the math. We're quickly approaching the limits of my mathematical knowledge, and I'm not confident I could teach this well at all. However, I'll put a link below to some free courses from Khan Academy on this subject if you do want to learn more. But I will point out, because I think it's cool, that you might recognize this formula, or at least you will probably recognize it if I say it this way. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In other words, it's the Pythagorean theorem in real life. But again, we don't really need to know how this function works. We just need to know that it returns the length or the magnitude of the vector. So that's get magnitude. It returns a value, but it doesn't change the vector. However, the next three functions, normalize, set magnitude, and limit magnitude, will all change the magnitude or the length of the vector itself. The normalize function sets the magnitude of the vector to a length of one. So if the length is less than one, it will be increased to one. And if the length is greater than one, it will be reduced to one. However, the angle or direction of the vector is not changed at all. So if we think of vectors as arrows pointing in space, we can take the arrow and shrink it or grow it without changing the direction it's pointing in. And that's what normalizing does. It takes a vector and adjusts its length to one without modifying the angle of that vector. This type of vector is also called a unit vector. And a unit vector or a normalized vector is useful for a number of different vector operations, one of which we'll talk about in just a moment. In code, the normalized function looks like this. And again, I'm not going to explain the math. What's important here is that when you call normalize on a vector, the length of that vector is set to one and its angle is left untouched. But there is one thing I do want to point out. You can't call normalize on a vector whose length is zero. You can't do this mathematically, or so Google tells me, but more importantly for our purposes, if you tried to do this in code, you would end up dividing by zero and your game would crash. So that's why this check exists here. We need to make sure that at least one part of the vector is not zero. So it is important to remember that because this check is here, you can call normalize on a zero zero vector without the game crashing, but nothing will happen to that vector. It will stay zero zero. So keep that edge case in the back of your mind, or you might wind up with some weird bugs down the road. Next up, we have the set magnitude function, which, as you might guess, sets the vector to the magnitude you pass in. Just like the normalized function, it doesn't change the vector's angle, it only affects the vector's length. In code, the set magnitude function looks like this. We normalize the vector and then we scale it. Because a normalized vector has a length of one, you can simply multiply its components or scale its components by any scalar value and the vector will then just be that length. Finally, we have limit magnitude. This function will cap a vector's length to the value that you pass in. So let's say you pass in a length of five. If the vector is shorter than five, nothing will happen. If it is longer than five, though, it will be reduced to five. Now let's cover the code I skipped over in the last video because there's a really important and helpful fact about it. So the first thing we do here is we use point direction to get the direction from our ship's X and Y position to our mouse. This is half of what we need for a vector, the direction of the vector. And we actually already have the vector's length, the other half of what we need. The length is the Excel force. So we have all the information we need for a vector here. We have the length or magnitude and the direction, but it's in the wrong form. We have the vector information as a length and a direction, but our vector class uses an ordered set of numbers, an X and a Y. And often when you're working with vectors, you'll have this issue. You'll have information for one representation, but need to convert it to the other. In fact, one of the functions we just added does that. Get magnitude tells you the length of a vector based on its X and Y. But this code right here is how you convert 
a vector where you know the length and direction of that vector into the vector's x and y form. In fact, you can think of length der x as taking a vector represented by a length and a direction and giving you the x component, and length der y as doing the same for the y component. If you remember your linear algebra, and I don't by the way, I had to look this up in preparation for this video, these are basically wrapper functions with more descriptive names for sine and cosine. So taking all of this together, this code turns a vector represented by a length and a direction into a vector represented by an x and a y. Now let's use the functions we went over to improve our ship's seeking ability. All we need to add is two lines of code. We're going to limit the ship's speed by saying velocity.limitMagnitude max speed. And then of course, initialize max speed in our create event. And even though we've only added one line of code to our step event, this function actually uses all of the functions that we just added today. Limit magnitude uses get magnitude to check whether or not we need to limit the magnitude. And then it uses set magnitude, which uses normalize, and also a function from the last video, multiply. So we're slowly building up a language to talk about vectors and express complex ideas about them in very simple lines of code. But back to the ship, I've actually duplicated this object already, so I have two versions of this ship in the room, the version from the last video and the version with the changes that we just made. I've also made the room a little bit bigger so that the difference is more obvious. Now we can run a comparison of these two ships side by side and see the difference. As you can see, the ship that limits its velocity is better at seeking or at least staying close to the mouse, although both versions could work depending upon what you want. So there you go, and in future tutorials, we'll explore the difference between these two ideas in greater detail and implement a number of more advanced steering behaviors such as seek, flee, pursue, avoid, wander, and flock. <laughs>